fan favorite has returned all the way from the Serengeti, Joe Boppa Boopy. Joe knows best. What's up, dude? I can start a fire with two sticks. What? You can't, I mean, I would need like a little. That's why you will not be successful in life, Joe. Pretty much. What's your thoughts on marriage, dude? What are you gaining from getting married? Literally nothing. Th this might be controversial. I think that's an insurance policy for women. How many kids do you want? Do. I'm gonna have like seven girls. I swear to God, dude. My daughter's like, I'm going out in the forest all day. Like, no, you're not. What? I'm locking you in a tower. You're not going out anymore. <laughs> We're done. Your phone's gone. Ah, <sighs> Joe. You feel bad for Balenciaga? Yeah. I don't think it takes a very smart person to know that. Joe, these are some hot takes. Oh? Because I have nothing else to do. I'm bored. I watch the news all day and then I play Call of Duty. You think that's why people like you so much? Pretty much. Again, if you're that stupid, like that's on you. Try that out. There's a little buzzing, but don't worry about it. Can't do that. Oz is trying to figure out why. I On think all it's of them or just this one? I think it's because the cords are, the tips are touching. No, I, I can fix this for you. <laughs> Oz, is, Oz is a fucking amateur. No, I think dude. there's a buzz in the headset because there's like the, the tips of the, the, the cords are touching. I think there's too much frequency flowing through the cords. That's not. <laughs> I think if there's too many cords in one area. I don't know. The frequencies. No, you probably got to. I don't know. <laughs> this not, I don't like this though. Just act like it's I can't not there. hear it. <laughs> the whole I'm just gonna be like, there's like a fly buzzing around in my head. I, mm -mm. It's like it's like at nighttime if you start hearing a clock and then you hear a tick and then dude, you're like the fan and you're like now I can't do a little. Yeah, no. Now I've had quality fans in my house. All right, dude. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to Don't Be Sour, episode thirty-two, season two. Season two. Season two. Is this twenty-three or twenty-two? Thirty-two. No. Year. When this is, going this is 23. Nice. Happy you, New Year, guys. You are the first episode of the new year. Uh, we took a little break. I, I, I'm assuming all this is happening, by the way. I'm, I'm okay. speaking as if it's happening because Oz is on break. Everyone's home. So, and, you know, getting guests is kind of kind of tricky. But anyway, fan favorite has returned all the way from the Serengeti. Joe Boppa Boopy. Joe knows best. Hi. What's up, dude? Not much. You know, I'm cool if this one bombs because the first one did so well that now that fear's gone. Like, I don't. This, I want to give you some stats, bro, because, okay, so I've had some shitheads that have been like, oh, six months, you already have like Christian back, which I feel like six months is a good amount of time. Yeah, I mean, you're out of guess, so. Well, we're going to get to that, dude. But look, here's some stats from the Joe podcast, because if you haven't seen the first one, you definitely need to, because, you know, we go into your background, but this one, we've talked about everything. This is going to be our first kind of just like, Catching up like, stop looking at my notes, bro. Know. Joe, you had this, your episode, which I'm gonna link down in the description, had the second highest comments of all the podcasts. We talked about good stuff. We did. And, and you were the flowing. fourth highest with the thumbs ups. You had the fourth highest. Oh yeah. Why do you think, why do you think that happened, dude? I think I'm a pretty cool dude. Wait, hold on. Would you, would you be, it's kind of early. Do you, would you be mad if we did not do shots? I really don't care. Well, good. We're going to do it. Fireball? Fireball, because we are going to talk about hot topics today, ladies and gentlemen. I'm drinking coffee. Woo! Joe, why, why do you think, why do you think, although, what is this crust? What is that? We can't drink it. That's the worst alcohol. Like, what if is, we're going to drink. Dude, there's like, cru there's like, li like crystallization on this. It's like that Drake song, like, crusty, musty, flusty. He's talking about Fireball. I don't want to drink that. Mm, this brings me back to my college days, bro. Fireball is- I didn't go to college. Well, that's why you I never drank Fireball. That's why you will not be successful in life, Joe. Probably. Max, I'm not going to lie. This buzzing is- It's not there. The people can't hear it. That's all that matters. <laughs> but I can. Drink that, dude. Ariba. Abajo. El Centro. What's happening? El Drinko. I'm uncultured. <laughs> oh. It's like you're- it's like those fire, red hot fire can't, red hots can't, red hots. I hate those. I hate big red. I hate cinnamon. I hate all the cinnamon in the whole world. I love pepper. Hate cinnamon. Uh, hangover reference. Yeah. Joe, why do you think, why do you think your last podcast episode did so well? Because you were worried that it wasn't going to do well at all. Um, honestly, I don't know. It just did well. 80, I, like I said, I think, I'm, I think I'm a pretty cool dude. I think people were like, oh, look at that guy. Yeah, but you're And like, I think I'm different than like most of the people you interview. Yeah, you're a lot taller. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot cooler. But like, wh I have like no clue. why, why, why I did know. you get so many? And everyone in the comments was like, you're, 
if I ever do a co-host, you need to be the guy. Would love that. Joe is so interesting. I think his I, have, take. I have different views than most people, but also, mm-hmm. I dude, I don't know. I it happens with like look at my YouTube channel. I don't have a lot of subs, but I'm not far behind you on views per video. Like compared to like I get the same views as people with a million subs. Yeah, no but, clue why. I feel like I have a little loyal fan base, dude. You know, I I, I feel like you're so outspoken, blunt. Mm-hmm. outlandish, if you will, maybe, but not in like a ridiculous way. You're more, you're like the Larry David of, that was gross. What? Fireball. Mm. Still the aftertaste. Don't worry. Still, there's still more chances. Yeah, cool. You're like the Larry David. You, you, you call it how it is and you, you call out like real things. Sure. Do you think that's why people like you so much? Maybe. You should comment down below and let me know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Do you think this episode is going to do as well as the last episode? It, honestly, it all depends on your thumbnail and title. So that's, that's on you. I, I can't it's believe the, you. the last one that was like interviewing my biggest fan. I didn't think that would do well at all. Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm going to title this one. Well, that's and, what and, it comes down to. And this one, like normally I do interviews. This is, we're just going to, we're, we're just going to shoot the shit, bro. I like it. You should get a, a couch. You need a more chill space, you know? No, I, I have a couch back there, but yeah. I don't like the couch because then the, here's the reason why I have the table podcast one-on-one rather than the couch, which I understand is more relaxed looking, but everyone who watches a podcast with the couch, it's, it's always dudes and they're always just man spreading. You have to, and their big old bulges are just like out there and everyone wears shorts. Like they're just sitting there with, with your this legs. Is when you watch podcasts is what you're focused on the whole time. Yeah. Cause their fucking dicks are just in my face, bro. And this is why you sit with your legs crossed like a girl. <laughs> no, I don't about I, the bulge thing. Joe, Joe thinks that if you sit with your leg, like, here we go. Well, Oz, crop it on this, right? He's doing this. If you do this little thing, this little guy. Where's your, where's your bits going? And, and instead of this, instead of this thing, like the, the, the men do. Because that gives you some space. You, you, you hold, you tuck. You're like tucking down? Well, no, I, 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 I like, t- sometimes I have to like tuck up. Like li- I have to lift up. It's very comfortable. I'm sitting like that, like now. I don't like I'm, that. It's comfortable uh-uh. to sit with, with the cr- crisscross. No. Crisscross applesauce. Look like a girl. Like tuck it all behind and put, mm-mm. That's not, that's not girly to sit like it that. It seems like it might be. I think fancy guys do it. Who's a fancy guy? Like if you're really, really rich and successful, you, I, you mm-hmm. sit like that. No one questions. Jeff Bezos never sat like that. I promise you that right now. I'm talking like, yeah, but he's like money. Like Bill Gates price is like that. <laughs> what is that? Dude, it's very comfortable. Right, Joe, what's going on in your life, dude? What's, what's new? Um, bought some new cars and that's about it. Um, that app I talked about previously has kind of taken off a little bit. That's good. Doing good there. Uh, the affiliate tracking. Uh, oh, I'm, right. I'm, we're working on right now to make it something where anyone can just add it to their Shopify store and go. So that's that's the plan. Kind of instead of this like invite only thing. But hopefully that'll be big. If that's big, that's my hypercar. You know. You want to yeah. get a hypercar? I would love to get a hypercar. What what new car do you have since the last last episode? Um, I bought the X five M. I got rid of the Tesla, and the Raptor R is going to be here in like three weeks. You were talking about the Tesla in the last one, and you had the Tesla for how long? One month, start to finish. Terrible. I hated it. Hmm. It wasn't, there were things about it that weren't bad, but overall it was terrible. Let me ask you. So everyone likes the, the Tesla, or, or, or so when they do like the launch mode, that's the, you press the gas down, there's zero lag, would you say? Yeah. And it's just instantaneous power. Yeah, it's like a power drill. You know, is, like, is that how every electric car yeah. will be? Mm-hmm. Unless they, I mean, some of them are programming them to kind of chill out a little bit. So like uh, the Mustang SUV they came out so with you, is yeah, like you just, programmed to kind of just slowly roll into it. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, electric motors on or off. There is no spool up. I mean, a little bit, but not, you're not waiting on your cylinders to start firing and things start spinning faster. It just goes. I mean, think about like a, like a gas powered leaf blower compared to like a power drill, like on or off, or you have to like wait for it to spin up. I don't know how to think about all those things. Okay. Anyways, yes, all electric cars will be. Like the electric cert, possibly very fast, zero to 60. Promise you that. And it's just instantaneous. Mm-hmm. I, I, I still hope they put the engine power, the sound in it. They probably will. We definitely want the engine sound. Very lame. But so yeah. you, you bought, you bought uh, the X5. The X5 MW. M comp. And how long are you going to have that car for? I've had it already for two months, three months. I'm going on three months. I'll probably have it until the, I don't know. I ordered a Cayenne Turbo GT, which out of what? your, you don't know what that is, but. When that comes yeah, in, I put, the that, on my, I put, will go. I put that on my chicken when I'm, when I want it to be a little spicy, a little cayenne pepper. Yeah. That's coming. That'll replace the X5M. Why do you do this, Joe? Because I have nothing else to do. I'm bored. What's any, I watch the news all day 
and then I play Call of Duty. Like I would, I, I would understand it if you were swip swapping cars so fast because you're making 15 YouTube videos on each one and then you've run its course and now you're starting a new car. But you at make least, one, maybe two videos. Yeah, but at least see, people now know that I do enjoy my car. I'm not just doing it for YouTube. I actually Apparently, enjoy buying cars and driving them and selling them. I don't have to document No one enjoys me doing just, it. that's the dumbest thing. I go I for drives all the time. I'll just go for an hour long drive. For no no one's like, yeah, my hobby is just buying cars and then driving them for short periods of time and then selling them. Well, no one's telling me drive a car I don't own. Why can't you just get, get a car? Like, that's why I don't think you're actually a car enthusiast. Like, I'm a Jeep enthusiast. I get it. I stick with it. I always have a Porsche. You have a BMW right now. But there's a Porsche too. You don't even drive it. True, but there's always one in the garage. I just don't get it. I've had a 911 in the garage for like six years at this point. And it's been in the garage for five years. Pretty much. Anything else new? Uh, no. Not that I can think of. You have a dog? We didn't talk about your dog. Yeah, the last I had one. a dog. I know, but she like you're, too. you're a dog owner. How does I that am how a dog it? owner. Uh, she's awesome. I'm going to leave it at that. She was a fucking nightmare for a long time, but now she's, she's getting good. She's like starting to mellow out a little bit. Like I think at three, she'll be a good dog. Like, dude, I feel like dude for the first year was like a little shithead. And now no, he's he, kinda, wasn't. Eh, he used to be a little bit of a shithead. You have a beautiful Doberman pincher. A little Doby. Yeah. Named Senna. Yep. Put it on the screen right there. Yeah. You know, controversial thing with the Dobermans, the ear thing. You, you're her ears very pointy. Cropped. Very, very pointy. It's like a missile. You don't want it to be not pointy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Missiles, you need it to be pointy. Yeah. Well, uh, why didn't you leave him floppy? I didn't have an option. A lot of the breeders in the U.S. won't. So they actually outlawed that in Europe. So in Europe, it's illegal to crop a dog's ears. Like they don't even have the option. Here, the breeders typically force you into it. So by the time I could adopt Senna, they were already done. Like the only way you could get around that is if I reserved one going forward and then paid an extra fee to not do it. Because the breeders don't like not doing it. And you got a lot of flack. I mean, again, it's not your choice. Yeah, it kind of, it put a damper on the, the puppy stage. Because like when you had dude, you were like, you're, posting you, it yeah, and, you're using it for some views you know yeah yeah i know i yeah. use everything in my life for views yeah, yeah so like when you had dude everyone's like you know everyone wants to come pet him or whatever like send this whole puppy face she just had like these crazy bandaged ears which like it wasn't bloody or anything it was just like little posts it looks but, like, like you have people, casts on your ears yeah like people from a distance are like oh shit like something's wrong with that dog so like send us puppy life wasn't very you're not you're not getting any like you're not picking up girls with a doberman puppy with a bandaged head mm. Mm. And have you had to deal with any having a Doberman, which is a I'm not say I love all dogs. There's obviously a stigma around Dobermans. When you do you do you do you do you experience that when you like take Senna out of like yeah. people are like, oh, yeah. whoa, whoa, Doberman. People, people across the street. Like if I'm walking on like, the no side, one gets scared of a golden doodle. Side. No. Yeah. Yeah. She definitely she's a little intimidating. She also hates kids. And that doesn't help because like she. Yeah. You know, you know. <laughs> She what? Like, we'll be at, like, like if we're at a stoplight and I have the window down, I was, this happened to me. I was at a stoplight. I had the window down. Senna put her head out. The lady next to me rolled down the back window so her little daughter could, like, wave to Senna. And as soon as it goes down, Senna starts, like, snarling and, like, growling and something. Like, the window slowly goes back up and the car <laughs> drives away. And I'm just like, Hi. You know, I, I like to think that uh, dogs are in, you know, in relation to how they're raised, right? You know, I think aggressive dogs come from maybe aggressive households. You think? Maybe. Maybe. No, I'm not aggressive at all. I don't, I don't think you're aggressive, but like, you know, I, I, I think it sucks <clears> how like dogs get stigma, but like, to be honest, so when I walk dude in the morning past two days, there's, there's this guy that walks this big old pit bull and I'm talking like, not like one of those small pit bulls. No, this like is hundred plus. Oh yeah. 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 With, with, a, with, he hasn't been fixed either. So he's got big old nuts. You're really focused on like bulges and no, I'm just saying, I'm trying yeah, to paint okay. the picture of yeah, this no, dog. I see it now. Thank and you. he has like the, the chain collar yeah. and everything. And when I, I'm on the opposite side of the street and when I'm walking down this dog, like this guy's like, I, he could be the friendliest dog in the world, but he's pulling back. And that dog is like, probably not friendly, yeah. like, like, like aggressively snarling yeah. at dude and like tensing up. And the guy's like having to, and this is a big man who's holding it like that. And I'm not assuming the dog is dangerous, but the first thing that goes on in my head is like, if the dog does run at me, what am I going to do? Nothing. I you would, versus a hundred pound pit, I'm the, my money's on the pit. I think what I would do if a dog chased up, ran after a dude, I didn't know what to do. I think I would take dude and I would like, you know, in Breaking Bad, when he throws the pizza on the roof. You say that, but no. I would pick dude up. Yeah, but it's going to bite your leg and you're putting dude down. 
No, I'm not. Yeah, you Adrenaline are. Adrenaline would be through me. No, I would hold, no. dude, 65 pounds. If a pounds, hundred pound pit is fully like sunk its teeth into your thigh, there's no way you were still holding dude up acting like it's not happening. You were dropping dude and grabbing that dog. No, no. All right. I'd probably one hand and I'd yeah, go, dude. please stop. You flip a car over I'd go, too? I'd go, please, mom please don't do this. Okay. Yeah, I, I paid a bunch of money when I got Cinna to get her trained. That was like the first thing I did. I think if you get a dog that has like an aggressive history, well, I mean, it's, I don't think it's a hit. It's no, not but a, it's what they're bred for too. Like, like Cinna instinctively is the most protective dog I've ever owned. I don't think that's like, I think that's part of the breed. Like they're bred to be guard dogs and you can tell like she consistently searches through the house. Like if, if like cleaning ladies come over and we're outside and we come back in, Cinna will literally like sniff the air when we walk in and immediately start searching the house to find out where they are. Like she's always, and I didn't train her that like, that's just part of that breed. I'm pretty sure the historic breed the doberman is actually the it's a guard dog isn't it like the god of death or something no anubis anubis, anubis. it's not they're not related. which is a doberman no it's not it's a anubis it's a, is a, put it put anubis it's not put anubis and sin on the page they do look alike and dobermans are used for that but it's not the same thing it's a different thing like the anubis is not based off a of doberman the doberman was bred i did a lot of research <laughs> doberman was bred by some german dude that was a tax collector that was sick of people not paying him his money and wanted to basically protection, but didn't want to pay for like a security guard. So he just bred, I think it's like a Rottweiler mixed with a, I don't even know, like a Greyhound or something. I, I'm not entirely sure, but it was literally bred to be a guard dog. How do we get from wolves to chihuahuas? Yeah, you know, look at like Ava sometimes. I'm like, <laughs> like how did you, exi- yeah, I don't know. Like the ancestors is, I don't, I don't get, I understand how, Eva, I, I, can't, oh, I don't know fully understand. Well, I mean, how did we get from Vikings to us? I still feel like I portray a good Viking. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel, I feel like I could still do it. Do you think, do you think these kind of topics are what people like here? No, people are bored as shit right now. No, they're not. I think so. Dude, podcasting is hard, bro. I'm sure it is. Because I am, I am 32 episodes in and getting guests lined up is tricky. Yeah. Okay. I don't understand. Like, do you think there's a lifespan on podcasts? No, I mean, look how long because Joe Rogan's been doing it. No, I will say definitely no, but as a consumer of Joe Rogan's content, I go in and out. I'll like, I'll watch one and then I'll watch like four in a week and then I will not touch one for like two months. And then it's not until he'll like have Elon Musk or somebody that I'm like, oh, I want to watch that, that I'll get back into him and then I get back. I think people will come in and out. Do you think the life cycle of the podcast is you start and then you go through your network of people that you know, and then you run out of that and then the podcast dies? Maybe you've done a good job getting like outsiders. I, some this of, is some of them. I, this is my 30. I, you're the third repeating one. And to be fair, the one re- first repeating one was my girlfriend, which made sense. Cause it went up on Halloween, which was when we and her first dated. I feel mm-hmm. like that made sense. Mm-hmm. Christian, it's been six months. We got back you, uh, a fan favorite, you know, but I think like, I think people assume you're supposed to just have this Rolodex of indefinite guests. Yeah, I mean, I think you're you're gonna run into this issue where like you're gonna have to start having people on that no one knows who they are, and that's I mean Joe Rogan does that too. There's occasionally a guest on his. I'm like I've never heard this person's name in my life, and it'll be like someone's manager that knew somebody. I mean, I think you just have to open up. Can't, every guest can't be like a social media. I think that's the problem also with like solo doloing it. Like myself, you look at Impulsive, very popular podcast. He's got his boys on there. He, I'd say every fifth or fourth or fifth episode, it's just him and was it George and yeah, Mike? Yeah. So it's just them talking about nothing. That could be us. We could, that could be us. But I think podcast though, I think you go quantity over quality. What? Yeah. I think you just have to like, you have to have more and more guests on, even if the episodes do bad, I think it looks better to have more episodes than to like, Oh, I don't have a guest. So I'm not going to do one for a month. Do you think people are thinking that I ran out of guests? That's why I took a two week break for this holiday. But really my producer who edits these is just home with his family and I don't want to make him edit videos. Yeah. This is Oz's fault. Blame, yeah. Blame him. Oz. Put yeah. Oz on the screen right here. <laughs> this is his fault. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about a solo episode? Why? Like what if, are you gonna do? I do I do like I do twenty to thirty minute uh just do improv. I do Q and A's all the time, 30 minutes. Yeah, but that works on your YouTube channel. It's on a podcast. You can't podcast this is a YouTube yourself. channel. This is a YouTube yeah, channel. You're not gonna podcast alone. Why? I, don't, I feel like you could. I feel like I, if I had a topic, let's, 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 like if I was talking about, um, you know, here's how to, be, how to build a, a strong fitness social media. That'll do well. Community. Yeah. You should charge people $5 to see it. Dude. 
You know, I'll tell you, these podcasts are getting, a lot of them are getting demonetized. Because uh, of what uh, we're talking about? I don't know. At first, I thought it was cursing. It'll be, this one will probably get, yeah. I thought it was it's cursing. It's not cursing. They don't care. Okay, for Oz's got demonetized because we talked about pew, 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 pew. You can talk. I'm, uh, pew, pew. I, have, I have a YouTube video where I, sh I use some pew, pews. Okay. I got, yeah, that one got taken His down. got demonetized. Claudia's Walsh got demonetized where we, there's no cursing on it, really. We talk about why someone does not do OnlyFans. You can't not do it. That's bad. But we talk about OnlyFans with Mona and Jazzy, not, yeah. not demonetized. Christians got demonetized. We just talk about Alphalete the whole time. What is going on, YouTube? People are probably reporting it. People don't like you, they're reporting it, and then you, you can appeal them. I, d I did. I click, I click manually review, so someone has to manually do it, and I know they're not sitting there watching the whole damn podcast, and then it still gets dinged, mm. and then there's nothing you can do after that. We live in a weird time, dude. I told you about my, my Call of Duty username. Why don't you say what? I don't want to get canceled again, so it's fine, but- Fuck it. My Call of Duty name for like <laughs> five years has been Caitlyn Jenner. Unrelated. Don't ask. It's just a good name to have. Nothing's better than when someone's like, oh, I just got wrecked by Caitlyn Jenner. Uh, someone reported it. I appealed it and an Activision rep told me that they had appealed it and actually it was homophobic and I had to change it and they forced me to change my name and now I'm on Activision probation. Now it's Max's mom. I'm like, how is that offense? Like how I'm using someone else's name. I feel like that's impersonation, which is illegal, first of all. Not on Call of Duty. If I made my username on COD Barack Obama, I would be fine. <laughs> Just saying. No one would be mad about that. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Anyway, let's talk yeah. about your let's talk about life right now, Joe. Mm -hmm. How's uh are you investing right now? Um, I gambled like four thousand dollars on spy options the other day and lost all of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I you know, Joe I don't invest, I gamble. Th this might be controversial. Mm -hmm. I think Joe knew something about the stock market crashing. Oh yeah. Because Joe, I believe it was in March or January. Mm -hmm. Joe told me said in March, starting in March, he's like, if I were you, I would pull all your money out of the market because all of the stocks are going to go down. Did you do it? No, because mm -hmm. I thought you didn't know what you're talking about. Yeah. No markets only go up. Well, that's what, if everyone just, if everyone just kept buying, everyone would go up. I don't understand. Everyone would make money if everyone just bought. It sounds like a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> <laughs> this is how this works on the internet. Yeah. But you, you told me, you told me you were like, you should pull all your money out because the market is going to crash. Yeah. How did you know that Joe? I don't think it takes a very smart person to know that the market does. It just doesn't keep going up and up and up. It should. The, the, the I can't say that word. The, the thing that happened two years ago was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. There's no more stimmy checks coming out. You know, no one's, no one's been paid to stay at home and all the companies are laying everybody off. The market's coming to an end. Dude. This is the whole thing's coming down. There's going to be a recession. hundred percent. Kramer, you know, Kramer, he's the, the guy, guy on TV that always gives bad advice. That's what everyone says. Yeah. yeah. He said that he doesn't know. If there's, he's like, I'm pretty sure there won't be a recession. There's going to be like, as soon as he says something, go the opposite. There's actually a guy on Twitter, I think, that literally does the opposite. Like, if that guy says buy this, he sells it. And if that guy says sell it, he buys it. And I think he's, like, up 20%. Like, he's, like, always following the opposite of that guy, and he's actually up. How do you wh – what is the exact I, – I feel like the – I mean, I know it, it's hard for me. I'm like, oh, like, business is doing great mm -hmm. or whatever. But I, I look at the market as the dic dictation. Um the factor of like how yeah. the economy is doing, which I feel like it, is a good no. What? Not, not anymore. It used to be, but not anymore. No. no, it's all it's all fake. The money in the market right now is money pumped in by the government. It's not really. It's very. It's like that inflated that's like, market. <laughs> put that on the screen. Ask. Pretty much, you really can't go off that anymore. You honestly, like the easiest thing to look at, look at like the housing market, or look at the car market. Stock. Hey, houses are down. Well, everything's down. But look at look at. If you looked at like a year ago, McLaren 720S, there was like a hundred for sale in the US. Now there's like 600 for sale in the US. When you see the exotic car market explode, it's because all the rich people are no longer rich and they're selling all their goddamn assets. So when you see there's a thousand Huracans for sale in the US, you know that- the Why are the rich people not rich anymore? Because the people that were buying those kind of cars got rich off of crypto and stuff and they no longer have money. I think you only lose money if you sell. I mean, it's just not there temporarily. Yeah. You know, and speaking of losing money. You know, they're, they're trying to make unrealized gains taxable. That'd be some shit. Yeah. So like when you were up at your all-time high, you could have gotten taxed at that, even though you didn't. Now that you lost all of it, you still technically you know You know what I heard? I was told by Andre Jick, who's a big finance guy on YouTube, okay? Uh, buddies with Graham <clears throat> Stephan. 
he told me, I always thought, let's say you put a, let's say you put $5,000 in, I don't know, Apple, whatever. And bing bong, it goes down. Mm -hmm. You now have $2,000 in Apple. Mm -hmm. You could sell all your Apple stock. Okay. You take your $2,000 out. I thought, because my friend told me this, that that $3,000 that you lost, you just go, Hey, IRS, I lost $3,000 tax write off $3,000. And I thought you could do that. Like I lost 50,000. I lost a hundred thousand dollars stock market. I sold everything. I'm writing off a hundred thousand loss. Andre told me that it's only up to like $3,000. You can't just write off all the money you lost. I wasn't aware of that, but it makes sense. I mean, it's your fault. I don't know if you know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be smarter over here. I, for the longest time was so you know, I bought all the freaking stocks that were booming through the roof. I didn't know it was only three grand. I didn't know it was like, you can only, you can only write off what you lost that you put in. So if you put 10 in and it went up to a hundred and then it came back down to 10, you couldn't write off the 90. No, no, no. Yeah. But I thought you could just write off if you lost money. But like if you put in 10 and you lost five and you took five out, I, yeah, I thought you could write off that five. Yeah. It turns out we're all screwed. Oh. $600 PayPal too. What? IRS. They're tracking every transaction, PayPal, Venmo, Apple pay, anything over $600. But in the same week they announced that, the government announced they lost $2.2 trillion. It's unaccounted for. The Pentagon is missing $2.2 trillion. Where did it go? Why don't they just print more money? They do. Is that, that's what inflation is. Yeah. Every time, I don't know what goes on in the world because I'll just like open my, I open my portfolio and I'm like, oh, it's red again. And then, but some days it's just like, shoo, like plummets into the earth. And I'm like, what happened? What Usually happened? Fed raising rates on that. Day. Yeah. And he's like, yeah. and they're like CPI yeah. and they're like other stuff. And I'm like, what does that mean? And then some days it goes up a lot and I'm like, yay. And I'm like, I'm doing it right. And I'm buying smart stocks. I'm buying blue chips. And then some days it's just like, no. And it's back down. And I'm like, I've been holding these smart stocks for a year and I'm still losing. Mm -hmm. And then everyone's like, just go, hey, it's about five years, dude. It's about 10 years. And I'm like, are you going to say that for the next five years? And then I got to say five more years? It's painful, dude. You should, if you look in how banking works, there's a couple of videos. There's a guy like Cold Fusion on YouTube that I watch. Mm -hmm. He does like explanation on banking. It's, it's terrifying. There's not, you know what just happened to FTX? Yeah. Okay. That can happen with every bank. Like if every person in the United States right now took their money out at the same time, there's not enough money. They, they physically don't have enough money to pay us all out. I'm glad you brought up FDX because on my notes here, I want to talk about FDX. I don't know anything about it, but okay. I think I, I, I read a 90 second summary on it today and I think okay. I fully understand what's going on. Yeah. Here's what happened. Sam something. Yeah. What's his name? Sam Bank Bankman freed Sam Bankman freed SBF. Okay. He had an, uh, a, a program FTX, which in my mind is similar to Robin hood. It's just a, a trading platform. Crypto focus, but yeah. Okay. Coinbase would probably be a better. Coinbase, yeah. okay. Yeah. Hey guys, I had this app. It's so cool for whatever reason. Whatever. Oh, wow, this is a cool new app. I want to buy my crypto on this app. Okay. All right, I'm Sam. I'm Sam, okay? Joe, give me all your money. Give me your money. Yeah. Give it to me. Yep, that's all your crypto money. I have your money, mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and it's gone. Uh, No. And, and then everyone started giving me, 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 me money because mm -hmm. I'm Sam. But then everyone, so then I start taking my money from Joe and I start making investments into other things because I'm like, Joe's not going to want his money back anytime soon. And then I start doing risky investments, risky investments. Then Joe comes back plus 18 million other people. And they're like, I want my money back. And I'm like, oopsies. I don't have your money anymore. That's pretty accurate. But see, that's what happens in the banks. People don't realize. Yeah. Like your money in the bank was literally that your money in the bank. Like if I want to take a loan or like they're using other people's money. Well, so a, a traditional bank, like a regulated bank, I will say they have some limits on what they can and can't do. So you having a savings account, they're not allowed to like do some risky ass shit with that. Like you're agreeing when you open a savings account to what they can and can't do with your money, as opposed to if you gave a hedge fund $2 million and do anything they want. I think the issue with FTX was that the, they were using both accounts. So there was a risky side of the platform. And then there was the like, you can just hold your assets and we'll never trade those. But they put all that money in the same pot. And then when people took all their money out, the people that didn't agree to the sketchy shit lost all their money because guys, the sketchy shit took all the money. Out. So you're telling me 
that people went to go mm-hmm. like, for whatever reason, I, I just got married to the love of my life. I want to buy a house. I think I'm going to get out of this stupid crypto stuff. I would like my money back. And they were just like, it was more like don't have everyone it. was told, get the fuck out. And then they couldn't get out. I don't think this wasn't uh it was all triggered from a different guy, actually, from my understanding, like a different crypto guy kind of fed the this. Binance guy because the FT token, like the crypto token had basically all of FTX's liquidity was in their own token. So when that token, they, dropped they had down their own nothing, crypto token. Yeah. So almost all of their look. So if you looked at like, oh, we can pay all our customers out. They were, to my knowledge, using their token value as like, oh, we hold 18 billion of our own token at three dollars a piece so we can pay out all these people. But when that token dropped to zero cents or one cent, why did it drop? It, because the Binance guy sold all of it. He basically was like, hey, something doesn't look right. This is kind of fishy and sold like he owned like I think it was like a billion dollars worth or something. And that triggered a sell off and everybody started selling and everyone got scared. And as that token price fell, the liquidity of FTX fell, hmm. which is technically illegal. Well, not technically. It is illegal. I mean, you can't back a bank with your own money. Like Chase couldn't take your thousand dollars and then go blow it on something else and replace it with a Chase bucks thousand dollars, like Shroot bucks thousand dollars. <laughs> Shroot bucks. And they'd be like, no, no, we could pay you out. This is, a, this is an IOU. Right. That's better than cash. You're, yeah, yeah, you're going to yeah. hold on, to, hold, hold yeah. on to that one. Yeah. So that, I mean, it was, it's not good. Dude. It's like $10 billion minimum or something. You know what's crazy though is <clears throat> let's say these coins that crash down, everyone loses all their money, whatever. While everyone's losing all their money, someone got a lot of money. Yeah. Who are those people? Well, not, I mean, not like, like, like when the coin crashed, right? That's because people were selling. Yeah. Someone was the, someone was the first person to go, I'm going to sell a lot of my shit. Well, and and, and they're like, yeah, they they already had those. Yeah. How do they know when, how do they know when to sell it before it goes down? And they don't unless there's like insider. There has to do Joe. It's, so you're telling me when the, when the CPI information comes out and I look in the morning and I'm like, oh, my stocks are just rocket shit up, ship up at the same time. So a report comes out and you're like, hey, uh, the world's looking really good right now. And everyone's like, buy right now. Buy, 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 buy. Stocks go up. Okay. But okay. Look, this is why. I hate the stock market. As an investor, you, you're not an investor, right? You're just a guy that I'm an some, investor. some money in the market. You should be investing on like long-term stuff like Apple betting. Apple's going to go through the roof. SPY by betting. That's going to go through the roof. You're not a day trader. Like you're, you're not the guy that's going to invest tomorrow. And okay. CPI comes on Thursday. I need to sell. Like you have too much shit going on to try to do that. I think if you're going to do that, you got to really be in tune with all that and know what's going to come out in those reports. And even then you don't know, like if you're betting on the, the CPI is going to be better than expected. You think the market's going to go up. It was last week. The calls that I bought total gamble. CPI was better than expected. They mm-hmm. shot through the roof. I doubled my money. I should have pulled out, but me being a dumbass was like, oh, maybe they're not going to raise rates. And then a week later, they raised rates and everything. Yeah. Hmm. I would just say, if you're going to be an investor and you're not a real investor, you're not, you don't work for a firm, like just invest long-term. You're looking at, you know, Apple goes up 10% a year. I'm going to invest my money with Apple and sit. So I should feel confident <clears throat> if most of my money is in Apple, uh, I would say yeah. VOO. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a smart, I may be down well, hundreds of thousands of dollars, but I'm an, I'm a, until hey, I only care stupid, about the long term. I would have said the same thing about Facebook and then Facebook decided we're going to be the meta guys and now they're down 80%. So like until Apple does something stupid, yeah, I would, I'd say it's a face or fair bet to let Apple go up 10%. Here. It turns out that everyone <clears> years <throat> ago that call was calling everyone idiots for like, <laughs> bro, you're just sitting on cash. Yeah. You're such an idiot, dude. You could put that in the stock market. Now they're all like, Change, change. Well, yeah, but even sitting on cash is, I mean, we're 10% inflation. So I'd rather sit on my cash. You would have lost 10%. That's what I'm telling. Like I have, I have friends like the average human, which I I love these people, but I've, I've average humans in my life that don't understand how inflation works. Um, So I have friends that are, they're making the same amount this year that they did last year, right? They're making 75 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Well, he gets a bump for 2,500. He calls me, Hey, I got, I got a, a raise $2,500. Like I, this is great. Right now I'm making 76, five or whatever. 77, five. You're not because inflation has gone up 10% this year. So actually you would have had to get a 10% raise just to make the same amount this year that you made last year. But the average person, the brain doesn't think that way. Yeah. Well, they Joe, see a bigger number on the check and they're like, Oh my God, I'm making more money. Yeah, but people you're making who, less money. People who own businesses, you don't like if, if you, let's say you give someone a 5% raise and you're saying like, Oh dude, that's not, not you're getting a, half a percent because of inflation. Well, guess what? The business, all the costs have gone up for them. 
they're maybe paying 20% more well, for everything. You to, have to raise prices. Yeah, but you could. That's you, why inflation fucks the economy so hard because as a company, you have to raise your prices yeah, but to you, match you inflation. Can, you can't raise it in direct. Like when, when my cost of goods go up for sour strips and all the products, if I get a 20% bump from a manufacturer like we have, I can't raise my prices 20%. That's the argument right now. I, I think you should. And in doing that, the people decide what to do with government because they're pissed off about inflation. I don't think it's fair that companies have to absorb what the government does. Like government fucks up, inflation goes up. And then now as a company, you have to say, oh shit, I'm losing 10% a year. I think you raise a 10% and let the customers be pissed at the government for doing this, not you. So if I raise the prices on sour strips and someone complains, I say, why don't you write the White House? I don't know if it's the White House's fault, but yeah. The, well, who are they going to write? The, just at the government.com? I mean, com? It, it, you know, future elections and stuff will change. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think it's fair as a company that you have to just eat this 10% a year. I hate yes, it here. technically your employees need a 10% raise this year to make what they were making last year. I think inflation is at what, 8.2% 8, 8 or something? I wouldn't so that's know. That's what you would have to give them a raise for. Like rent, food, everything's gone up 8.2%. What? Everything. Yeah, they're charging for tortillas at Chipotle now. There you go. They're doing it. Why can't Sour Ships do it? Because people aren't going to pay $7 for a bag of candy. Dang it. Joe, these are some hot takes. Are they? But it's about to get hotter no. because you are on the Don't Be Sour game show. And this one, Joe, is this is going to be the best game show episode. Uh, we didn't do it last time. Of all time. We, I know, we didn't even drink show. last time. I know. It's Why gonna didn't be we drink. Oh, because you almost died. It's gonna be so hot in here, Joe. Okay, hold it's on. It's already kind of hot in here. So, here we go, Joe. You ready for this? Mm -hmm. If you were just listening to this, you're gonna be so missed out on. Okay. What are you doing? Hold on, Joe. I have two rocks, and I found you two sticks. Joe, mm -hmm. because in the last episode, Joe said that he could start a fire with two sticks. This is not what I said. Better than I could with two rocks. Yeah. And look, look how good th this isn't just two. This is, I have a starting stick for you. Mm -hmm. So Joe start, you know, actually I, I want to do a, a softball. This is just a funny question I have for you Yeah, yeah. to start it off. This is, this has nothing to do with this part, but okay. Joe, if you were born 10 years ago today, how old would you be? Jesus Christ. 10. What? 10. No, if you were born 10 years ago today, how old would you be? 10. No, like 10 years ago. Well, how old are you now? 28. Yeah, if you were born 10 years ago today, how old would you be? 10. <laughs> <laughs> you can't trick this guy. Yeah, you yeah. can't trick this guy. All right, Joe. We are going to put... I can't start a fire with we, this. Yeah, you can because, you, that, dude, that's a good stick. I have two rocks here. I would need like a little divot. I'm, I need a string. I'm worried. No, you... You rub it with your hand, just like you said you would, dude. I'm worried that we're going to have a fire hazard in here. I want Oz to put a 20-second clock on the screen. I can't start a fire. Try. There's no way. We'll try. My I'm, guy. I'm going to start. I need here, a knife. This is your flint. I need, I need a little place to put it. Use, I need like, some I, I, stuff I, This is why I there. found one with a little, a this little is point. Wet. Why is this wet? I used the hair dryer to dry that. <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I put the, I put so the hair. you came in early this morning and dried this? I dried it in my sink in my house this morning. Yeah, I, this I, is, okay. Ready? It's 20 seconds. Happen. Okay, here I'm we go. I'm actually more excited to watch you just slap these rocks together. Are no. those? Did you buy those? No, these are outside my house. Okay, nothing's gonna happen here. Start. I just, I just want to watch. Okay, you. all right. Yeah, this is how I do it in the forest. Yeah, do it. Wow, so much sparks coming hey, off. You don't rock. get on the all first right, try, sorry, Joe. Dude. You can't. I mean, I would need like a little. You know, I saw a little. God, and then I'm, you gotta I'm, go top to bottom. I'm hitting you know? my thumb here, yeah. bro. I'm just gonna get my hands dirty. Just and try it, Joe. You're not even trying, this bro. This is wet as well. Did this come off of your backyard thing? No, I found it. I used a hair dryer. I need bigger rocks, dude. I'm gonna, I'm whacking my thumb. I keep hitting my thumb. I need boulders. That's what it is. Yeah. Let me try Two one more time. 20 pound rocks would start a fire. That's yeah. Because yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing a little spark? It's because oh, yeah. the lights are on. You should huh? keep going. Oh, you almost got it. Mm -hmm. <sighs> dude, I, can't, I think I need bigger rocks. Yeah. Let me try this. Yeah. Let me try this Have because. Fun. Look, this is how you do it. Max, even even no, it, if that it's, was it's correct, friction. it's all wet. Yeah. It, it, have you seen the movies, Joe? They don't get it in 10 seconds, bro. This isn't your sex life. This okay. is like, this is real life, dude. Just let the record show you cannot start a fire with two random rocks you find in the forest. Well, it turns out you can't start a fire with sticks either, Joe. You can. You lose, I lose. What was this for? 
That's so if the that's fire, the fire started. That's if the fire started, uh, you put the thing on there. Not gonna lie, I thought we were doing like paper, scissors, rock when you first pulled, because you did like rock and paper and then I was waiting on scissors, you know? Did you think I was gonna bring two sticks to this podcast? I didn't, I didn't expect I that. I want you to admit that you're wrong, that you could not start a fire with two, two sticks. I don't, I think if we're gonna do it, let's go, like, I think there's a whole YouTube video. I can start a fire with two sticks. No, you can't. I need, I need a couple other things. I need like a little knife to put a divot and I need like some, you know, some little dry grass. The only it. fire that's gonna be started is in our bellies from this. Is this why you picked this? Fireball? Fire thing? Yeah. Yeah. That's clever, right? <gasps> Fuck. It used to go down so much smoother. Dude, I haven't gotten dr I haven't gotten drunk since I threw up blood. If you guys are listening and never don't watch my YouTube videos, first of all, shame on you. Second of all, I threw up probably a gallon of blood and then I stopped drinking, really. Well, I stopped getting drunk. You don't care about that? Okay. I'm just, I'm trying not to. Think so I feel like we have a lot of, we had a lot of hot takes yeah. already. Mm -hmm. We're going to start uh, a new thing on this, on this podcast. And it's called Hot Takes. Oz, set the logo on fire. Shh, he doesn't know that. He doesn't. He can't do he's that. He's going to know. Oh, he now he's definitely skills. Now he's definitely going to do it. It is on fire right now. Oz, splash it with water to get it off. Skills for that. Man. It is off. Dude. Oz oh, is on Google right now. Like how to <laughs> start fire after effects. Balenciaga. Yeah. I actually don't know much about it. Okay. I'll tell you. I'll <laughs> give I'll you your give, synapse. I'll, yeah, give, okay. I'll give you the breakdown. Mm -hmm. So Balenciaga yep. is one of these brands that is, you can't afford it. Clearly. I could afford maybe a bag or two. Okay. <laughs> uh, very fancy brand. Yeah, I know what it is. No, I know, I know I, the I, general I, you, idea. No, you need to put it okay. at a tier. I need to paint a picture because I didn't know these things. Mm -hmm. It's like a Dior, a Gucci, yeah. a Versace, apparently not a Burberry. I have found out that I thought Burberry was an elite. It turns no. out Burberry is- Burberry is like JCPenney. Burberry apparently is, in Joe's word, the JCPenney of luxury brands. I For the people, by the people. I think it's- <laughs> I think Chanel, Chanel and Burberry are about the same level in my book. No, yeah. Chanel is no, no, no. All the girls are. Okay. Maybe Chanel's, maybe they come to come back, but for a while they're like Chanel and Burberry were like side by side in the, nope. there are Burberry's got some, like, there's like some pea coats and stuff. They're like I thousands know. of dollars. I, I, I just don't think Burberry is like, it would be my first choice. If I, I think Burberry is the brand. coolest of all of them. Okay. Continue. Okay. So there's these elite brands. Balenciaga is one of the top. Okay. So they, if you didn't know fancy brands, the fancy you get, the stranger you get with your marketing. Yeah. Like it's always like this obscure, like yeah. artsy fartsy, weird kind of art. Okay. So Balenciaga uh, had a photo shoot and in the photo shoot, they were, mar I don't know what they were actually mark. I don't know what they were selling bags. They were selling something. It was a campaign for something. Yeah. And in there they had, I'm trying not to get demonetized. They had people who were it's bondage bears. They had. That's not gonna get fucking flagged. They had BBs, bondage bears. Yeah, saying with that voice, they <laughs> can't get past the algorithm. No, they can't. Dude. Yeah. Okay. So they had uh, very young adults. Mm -hmm. I'd say, very, very, very young adults yeah, in big. in these bondage bear outfits. I don't think so. No, they no, were that's just holding not right. a bag. That's they were right. Like, they're like bags. Yeah. They, okay. They weren't in. Okay. That would be wild. I random, mean, this was wild, but okay. Random young adults yeah. were holding <laughs> bears that the bears were having some sexy sexualized, sexy time bears. Yeah, yeah. And, but also in the, in the photos, there was like kind of like demonic photos yeah. on the, like drawings of weird stuff. Well, in the, it came out after this. And I, I don't know if it's where you're going, but the designer and like lead artist and stuff for Balenciaga has all like crazy stuff on her account. Like it was like, a girl. I thought it was a guy. Uh, I think there's multiple people involved, but yeah, I mean like, like babies covered in blood and like abort, like pro abortion stuff. And like, like these naked little small human sculptures that were like $40,000. There's some wild stuff as this is all unraveled. Okay. So these pictures come out as <clears throat> campaign and, yeah. and also in there, there's like, um, like articles of like very, uh, I don't even know, dude. It's like articles of like cases of like, you know what I'm talking about? There was like case, like 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 ar like articles of like case jury things that have gone on bet between like. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, there was a lot of like very specific things put in this photo that a lot got a lot of people outraged. Yeah, that no, was wild. And it was. It came I almost like feel bad for the brand though because I don't think 
the owner, I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but like, I don't think the owner intended to do this. Like, I think he, this, like, he just like art, like, oh, this is artistic and probably didn't look into it as much as they probably should have. And this is all blown up. Cause I don't think it wasn't the owner of the company that like did this whole art thing. It was this artist they hired or something. You feel bad for Balenciaga? No, but I'm just like, if tomorrow some rogue, you know, if you're not really paying attention and some like rogue person for Christian, Alphalete posts some crazy stuff tomorrow on their Instagram. But like, if he wasn't, you think Alphalete's going to hold pedo bears? I don't think so. I'm just saying like, I don't, I don't know if, if it's really the company's fault as much as it is like a couple bad actors in the company decided we're going to do this. And like, let's, but here's my thing. Like, if you're an elite company like yeah. Balenciaga, don't you think before something goes on as, as frivolous, as frivolous as like Instagram is, you know, yeah. these brands have been around before social media as frivolous as like just posting photos on IG for likes and stuff as an elite brand, like that has to go through multiple people would think. that are like, yep. It wasn't like someone took it, that person edited it and that person uploaded it. I mean, you would think, but I have totally unrelated. I have this thought all the time with cars. Like when I see a Kia soul driving down the street, I'm like, not only did someone design that, but like everyone <laughs> in the chain of command was like, that is a cool car. Let's make that. And then a customer had to go to the Kia store, see it and be like, that is a cool car. I'm going to buy that one. That's who I think about the Honda element. So maybe someone, did no, not the Honda this. element, yeah. the Honda, what's the truck? Honda Odyssey. No, that's well, a, an element. Van. No, it's is an element. element. No elements. The one with the doors pilot it's pilot. Dude, that's a ugly truck. Anyway, man, yeah. someone's gonna be. So when I see stuff like that, I'm like, all right, you know, maybe. Yeah, I know. I thought about that earlier. Someone's got like a Burberry jacket. I like Burberry. Like, <laughs> anyways, all right, continue. Okay, so no, <clears throat> no. What I'm saying is, first of all, that that's what I think about candy too. Like sour candy, when when someone's like, let's put a ten sour meter yeah. on there, and I eat it, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what who, is who this? Signed off on this. I'm like, or? someone was like, oh my. My mouth is just puckering, Johnson. Yep, dude. No, increase that sour label. Yeah. Oh my god, that's the problem. These candy brands, dude. They have like fifty-year-old people. They don't know it's sour, dude. You need me. Anyway, I digress. So it had to go through a whole bunch of. Maybe levels. not though. According to Mr. Bankman Freed, that was a ten billion dollar fuck up, and he says he had no clue anything was going on. So maybe we're giving these companies too much credit. Maybe it's run by like one dude that doesn't give a shit, and he's just partying on a yacht somewhere, and was like, "Yeah, send it." I mean, I like, really know, dude. Maybe he, he just thought like, hey, we're going to post this photo. It's going to be kind of edgy. It's going to be kind of controversial. It's like, like that's like perfect. It. We Let's love that. It. And then he gets a bunch of notifications the next morning. Can you imagine waking up to that? Like if you're the owner of Balenciaga and you wake up in the morning and have like 80 notifications, just like, oh. And now people, good. people like, uh, with understanding, people yeah. want nothing to do with Balenciaga. Oh, no, I think they 100% deserve. Like I kind of feel bad, but also like they should be wiped clean. Yes, yeah. you're out. And more importantly, though, like I think the designers were attached to de like I think there's bigger brands that also had ties to these same people. Like I think one of the people involved has ties to Adidas and shit. So I'm like, I don't know why we don't get mad at them. Like, I, I want to know. I get like obviously like let's say the photographer who has like, also let me just say this story took entirely too long to become mainstream. The Balenciaga thing it took like two weeks. No one touched it for like two weeks until after it happened. Kyrie it was did like posted? one little thing, and Kyrie was the who's minute, Kyrie Irving. Or Who's that? Irvin, that are singer? the guy that posted a he posted something that was anti-Semitic and then he refused to like say sorry, but he didn't take it. Who down is he though? The basketball player. Oh. My point is though, he did like within 10 seconds of him doing something, it was national news. Balenciaga got away with this for like it was like three weeks before a big news organization. Wait, it was like, posted for three weeks? Yeah, no, like the whole story. Like people were aware of it. Oh. It was like little Instagrammers and like YouTubers that called it out. Like the big news did not touch this story for like it was like 14 days until they got involved. Damn. Yeah. Like didn't want to touch it. They were I just like, want to know, like the photographer who had the idea for it. Obviously, something's going on in that. So someone had to shoot it. There had to be eighty people. On that I know set. that's what I'm saying. They're, they're all like standing there, like, "Yep, yeah, good shot." And they were like, mm -hmm. "Like, all right, like someone get some more makeup on the 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 child holding the the bear, little person. Yeah. Hold on, make make sure. Uh, can we get the um that little like demonic little picture? Can we let's let's put a light, better lighting on that? Like someone had to frame up. Someone had to. Put the, put the pictures they're trying on the to wall. Normalize, so this is going to get, this is going to get taken down. They're trying to normalize this because there's a, the P word that we're not supposed to probably use on this. Okay. Don't, um, but I don't know what it is. But don't say it. Pedo. They're trying to make that like a, that's not a bad thing. There's, there's been multiple people. I'm promised you go look this up. There's multiple people that are saying like that is someone's identity and it's not criminal for them to feel that way. Like we shouldn't call them that and make them feel weird about it. I think that, I think it's very black and white. I think Th that's actually a thing. Like there's governors and stuff that have pushed for like, this shouldn't be criminalized. It's just their, their way of thinking like their attractions shouldn't be criminal. And it's like, what, what do you, mm. yeah, you can't talk about that on the internet though. This will get taken down immediately. Do you think, but I think they're trying to, norm I think that is becoming like a normalized thing. 
I think most most things in life, people like who, celebrities, whatever brands, have gone through big controversy yeah. and have, you know, you take a hit for a bit, you come back. You think you think they're going to recover from it? No, they'll no. Probably I, they'll probably make a new brand. If I had to guess, Balenciaga's done. They will what? take the same group of people, go start a new brand, and everyone just won't check the names, and they'll just be allowed to start a new brand. I don't think you can start a new luxury brand. You can like if you're that. already in that position. Like you've already made hundreds of. I mean, you tomorrow could make another sour candy company. Yeah, but I don't think it's gonna. Uh, okay, do you I think? Just, I feel like that brand name is done. I don't think they come back from this. Do you think? Now, obviously, no one wants like the downfall. Everyone's like, you know, we're not in competition with anything else. But do you think the other really fancy clothing brands? Not, not. They're it, probably going through their marketing. Like, shit, do we have well, any kids I know, in here? But, 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 <laughs> but not like, not in like they liked. I, I think everyone can agree that like that campaign, the idea behind it, ridiculous. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. But do you think just like? when anything bad PR happens to like a company, do you think like the other, like Versace's like, yes. 100%. Tomorrow, if Sour Patch Kids was like, we're going under, you're not going to be happy. You're going to be like, yeah. No, just, nice. Like I just <laughs> That guy I planned in there last week worked. <laughs> do you think like, you think Hermes, like the owner's like. Yeah. No, uh, Herm, they're on a different level. No, they're all the no, same. Hermes is one of the top tiers. I think like, like Hermes and like Louis don't care about Balenciaga. They're, they're what? small. Yeah. yeah I, I thought they're, they're all. No. Damn. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, dude, you know, keto stuff. I'm not supposed to talk about that, but I, what I talked to you and Taylor about the other night, which I feel like people will agree with. I was terrified. You can't just say what I talked about the other I'm night. I'm going to say it. What, I was terrified. I started watching Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, I, the, the, the show. I had to Google Jenna Ortega's age because for a split second, I was concerned. Like I, I might have to off myself. Cause she's a very good looking girl, but in the show, she's supposed to be like 16, 17. So I, I had to literally go And while I'm waiting for Google to load, I'm sitting there like thinking about like, I'm contemplating my life. Like if, if it comes up that she's 16, like what, what do I do? Lock you up. It's some, yeah. Report myself to the cops. It turns, she's, she's like 20. So it's fine. But there was a split second there where I'm like, Oh my God. That could have been bad. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't, but hot takes, dude. Yeah. No, that's a wild one. Anyways, continue. Why don't we talk about steroids? That's a hot take. Why do you want to talk about that with me? I don't care. It's fun. Be no, we're not talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. No, right, no, yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, guys. Don't even. A uh, oh, liver king. Yeah. 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 Okay. What mm -hmm. do you think about that, dude? Um, Wait, liver king. I, you know, sometimes people don't know a about it. businessman doing business things. Why don't you explain who the liver king is to people who don't know? I, I randomly found out about him uh, like a year ago. Basically, this, this dude um, who looks like me. <laughs> not at all. Looks like a true Viking, actually. Uh, basically, he was promoting his own brands and talking about how he only eats meat, basically. Living like a, your ancestral primals. And then that was how he looked the way he did. Like, using his supplements and eating strictly meat was how he looked the way and he nuts. did. And nuts. And he unequivocally said that he did not do steroids over and Wait, over what, and over. What word did you just say? Unequivocally? Unequ what? What'd you say, though? You said unequivocally. unequivocally. Is that not a word? I think you said unequivocally. I don't know. But either way, homeboy said he didn't do steroids ever. Like, if you accuse him of it, he'd, like, walk out of the podcast. Like, he was very upset if anyone even said anything he was about like, it. He's it like, I've never out, taken this stuff. Won't take this stuff. Yeah, will never take this stuff. Dumbass sends an email. Why you would do this over email, I don't know. He could have done it over the phone. Anyway, if you're going to do stuff illegal, email, don't do it on email. Yeah, turns out he's doing, like, $10,000 a month in steroids and shit, basically. And now everyone's upset about it. I really don't care. I think if you were naive enough to believe it, it's kind of on you. Like it was kind of obvious. No one looks like that. There's guys on Instagram that do strictly eat meat and stuff and they don't look like that guy. Like I feel like it didn't take a, a rocket scientist to figure out this guy was probably on something. Do you think he, do you think there's some people out there that are so naive? Like I can understand of like, yes, no, I, I think that like, like Captain America just worked really hard for that role. There's no way he took any sort of enhancements. Like, come on guys. Like, even then, that's like on a lower scale of like a body, right? I think people want to believe, they'll believe what they want to believe. But do you think there's some people out there, like when it came out, they were like, what? Yeah. He was, no way. Well, there's like a class action lawsuit of people that bought a supplements that now want to refund because. Oh, because they were like, I bought this thinking that I yeah. could be like that because he said, damn. I mean, you know, but what? again, if you're that stupid, like that's on you. I don't think, In just, my mind, I, I don't like, think just because you're naive and you get little fooled and trick tricker trickery i don't think you should like i don't know be like good for you for losing your money it's similar to like i mean i feel like i, I guess know. it comes down to like if, if you're being sold a lie what's the consequences there 
if you, it happened in the fitness industry for a while in the fitness industry, everyone was selling coaching. Yes. But they had other people doing the coaching for them. And then someone got, I think Brittany Dawn, someone got caught for this. Well, no, and Br- it was like a court case about it or something. Brittany Dawn got no, her, her thing was because she was getting like cookie cutter programs saying it was individualized. Like, okay. I think your angle is like people weren't getting coached by these people. Yeah. Like you're paying this big influencer to coach you. And then you find out that it's like some high school girl he's paying to do all the programs and stuff. I'm like, is that illegal? Is that, I mean, it's obviously frowned upon. You're upset about it, but like, is there any like, what is, is it illegal to be, but also have bad morals again, if you're naive enough, like if you believe someone with 8 million subscribers, that's making a video every day has time to send you personalized message every morning and stuff like that's kind of on you. Like you bought into this, like, obviously it's not them if you think about it, but people want to believe what they want to believe. Side tangent here. You, you brought up how, uh, you know, I bought a program and it is, I'm like, I'm being coached by this person who I mm. love in the fitness industry. Turns out it's, you know, his buddy, Bob, mm. who is running the coaching and yeah. it's not actually that person, you know, whether you're getting, are you getting the same experience? So is the moral and morality not, not a problem. But like, if you think you're getting working with this person and you're not, I think there's a problem. I think there's, it's lying. Yeah. But if you, if you fully transformed, if your bench is twice what it was, you look great. Are you upset? But I, but again, if I'm like, I want to be taught by Joe to code a stu- yeah. a, a nerd website mm-hmm. for my nerd house and my nerd game, right? And then you, and then you're like, yes, you are going to work with me. I'm going to teach you how to work, specifically me. When you chat, it's going to say, fuck, Joe knows best. Yeah, I'm chatting with you. You're telling me all the secret things, but it's Mark over here yeah. because Joe's so busy playing League of Legends that he's like, I have enough money to pay Mark. So yeah. He just teach him. I'm still learning everything but I'm being lied I think, to. I think it's hundred percent wrong. I think you should be yeah. upset about it. But the, going back to the liver King thing, it's like how many people changed their lives for the better because of him, even if it was a lie, like how many people have gotten in shape or have become better men? Cause there's other thing that I think he's pushing is like work hard, hard, you know, hard work ethic and take care of your surrounding, you know? So on that aspect of it, I'm like, if yes, he lied, but also like, you know, he probably helped a, a shitload of people in the process that, have been doing this and have been getting healthier and stuff. But the, so the, like, the problem is if you lie about that, like it, it, it proves that there's other people that maybe don't look as ridiculous as him that have said, I have never taken TRT. I am natural. I am, have never. What if they're just lying? I'm not touching that one. That's the crazy thing to think. You're like, yeah. well, well, yeah, well, like, no, they wouldn't lie. Wait a second. What if they're lying to me? But, but here's the side tangent I want to go on. You talked about Getting coached well, by someone on, else. To go back on that point. God real damn. quick, real quick. This is good. People like this. What's up? Logan Paul right now. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you watch Coffeezilla or whatever. Logan Paul's in hot water because his whole crypto thing turned out to be a scam. Well, a lot of people, same exact thing you just said. A lot of people were like, it's Logan Paul. It can't be a scam. He's already making so much money on other stuff. Why would he scam us? So a lot of people have that mentality. Like, I'll trust him because he's so big. He can't. What's the I think scam? I, 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 I think all uh, NFTs are a scam. Basically, he started an NFT thing. It didn't turn out to be what it was. They sold a bunch of people stuff that they can't even use in the app. That was That's supposed every to be NFT and ever. And now he's like, I want nothing to do with this and walked away. But there was like $20 million in these. Oh. So someone has this money, but now it's, and now he's starting a new project, totally separate. It's an interesting video. My point is though, exactly what you just said though. It's like, oh, you know, I trust him as an influencer. He can't be scamming us. So we'll just, we'll just believe into that. I think it's the same with these fitness influencers. Like I trust him. I grew up with this person. So like whatever he says must be true. His old NFT is like, we're going to put photoshopped ears onto animals. That's what it was. The new, f- new project is we're going to Photoshop animals onto ears. That's crazy. That's some crazy shit. Okay. Yeah. Here's the side tangent, dude. Yeah. So you said about people uh, misleading about being coached by someone. I know we got into like the only fans thing in the last uh, episode. Oof. What do you think about because here's something that people probably don't know. Let's say all of these top earners, top 1% for sure, top, everyone's always like, I'm the top 0000001%. It's like, why, what are, the, what are these fractions? Like, is that, yeah. uh, anyway. Um, it's like guys say they're like five eleven and a half. Like if you're <laughs> adding a half, you ain't six foot, dude. I'm like if you're worried about half inches, you're short. But a lot of people, th- all people uh, I would probably say most of these people who are making, and it could be guys too, who are making a lot of money on OF, a lot of their money comes from chatting with the person. And I've learned mm-hmm. that it's not actually the girl that's chatting with the guys. No. I, I find that immoral. Again, if you're stupid enough to think it's real. And okay, in that situation, I think the guys that are willing to pay for that are so 
hungry for attention that I don't even think they would really care. I mean, I think they prefer it to be them, but I think they're, they're, they just want that interaction so bad that they don't care who's chatting but, with them. But, but what level of like morality comes in? Because for example, like if you were to maybe talk to I'm, the person who's saying that like, you can pay me to chat with me, but it's really this other person yeah. because either I have so many people I can't chat with them or it's like, let's say, Joe, you want to chat with me. Okay. I'm the only fans model. Okay. And then you want to chat with me and you want to probably talk about some raunchy stuff. Like you want to talk about what I'm going to do to myself, whatever. That's raunchy? Yeah. Okay, nice. Put your finger in your ear. And, (laughs) but like, I'm like, oh, I don't want to talk. I don't want to have this creepy conversation with this guy because it's so inappropriate. Yeah. But it's like, well, then why would you, why would you be willing to put chat? That's what I'm saying. I I find it immoral. I, I think if you have an OF, and you are chatting with people, making all this money, but it's not actually you chatting. It's your husband. It's your boyfriend. It's your manager, whatever. Dude, you think I, someone's husband's talking to their wife? Yes, that 100%. Is wild. I think it is immoral to do that. As, and it's like, yeah, well, 100%. yeah. They're having, I think all of this is immoral. I think everything we've talked about so far is not there's right. There's other people that are like, oh, yeah, baby. Like, oh, yeah. I, I thank you for that donation. I love you. And it's like some guy, like some other person. I think that's wrong. I think on grounds of like legality, right? There's, I guess it'd be false marketing or like consumer protection or something. Could like, you I don't sue know. someone and be like, I'm, you want to chat with me? And it turns out it's it be like Taylor talking to you through me. I don't, I don't know the legal grounds. I'm sure there would be something. I mean, if you bought a package and on there, it said you're chatting with this person and it wasn't them. I think, I mean, at least like false advertisement. I don't know what the penalty for that is, but something. I, I really don't know, but I do agree. It, it's, it's messed up. But again, I think the guys that are doing it, they just, they, they want that. I mean, if you're on that level, you probably don't care what you're chatting with. I mean, you'd be chatting with a bot for all you know. I don't care if, if some person is in whatever stage of life they're at, like anywhere. Mm-hmm. If you're paying, if you're paying a dollar, five dollars, you think you're tipping someone a thousand dollars so that you can chat with this person. I think it's wrong. I, mean, I, I, I think, if you're doing that, you're already in a shitty place anyway. So I, I, whatever, dude, whether it be OF, whether it be selling coaching and you're talking to me, I think if you're paying for, to talk to someone and it's not that person, I think it's wrong. And I understand that you can't be talking to 800 people a day. Well, you think just charge more, talk to less people. Yeah. Drop it from hundred people to 10 people and charge those 10 times what you charge the other people. And then at least you're, well, you got to charge them more because of inflation. 10%. <sighs> yeah. There's a lot of, and with like, you know, you said guys who are in a, in a place talking what do you think about this whole, like this masculine, masculine red pill type of world we're in where everyone is like, don't talk to women. Don't, don't pursue women. All women will destroy you. Don't get married ever. What's your thoughts on marriage, dude? Oof. I've thought about this recently, right? So I'm, I'm pretty old school, right? I think you should get married. But recently I've had the after watching some Andrew Tate videos, I have changed my mind. After becoming a top G myself. <laughs> not a, not a, you're not I a do, dork I anymore. really don't, I don't know why a man would get married. Um, really? Because I mean, outside of the tax benefits, there's really not a, you know, there's, there's no benefit. The, really the only benefits end up being legal. And really the idea of marriage is, is legal, right? Like separation of church and state, that kind of goes out the window with marriage. The only thing you're doing when you get married is legally agreeing that you're going to be with somebody and putting yourself in a position to not be able to get out of that situation. Why? And I'm, I will get married. It's, I'm just saying, like, if you look at it from like a societal perspective, like why the government needs to be involved in who I'm going to be with, that doesn't really make any sense to me. So, well, I guess your argument of like the tax benefits, if you're making a bunch of money, then you don't benefit from like, you don't care about. No, that's what I think aid. as a, um, I think if you're a successful male, like there's really not a whole lot of incentive to get married unless your girl just really wants you to get, you know, like what, what are you gaining from getting married? Literally nothing. You're just putting yourself in a legal nightmare if you need to get out of that situation. Well, I, I guess, that's, I mean, women want to be married because they don't want to have to keep worrying about how they're going to continue doing that. But I think as a male, like it's kind of, it kind of sucks in our societal norm, how like people are anti, like if you go back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah. people weren't anti-marriage. That's like, that's like what you did. And only because of like so many bad outcomes of marriage over the generations, yeah. do people have the like, you know, well, like I don't want to get married because I'm so worried about getting, you know, I used to always joke. 
you can never get divorced if you don't get married. You know, that's exactly <laughs> right. And that's where I'm like, I think social media plays a huge factor in this. Like, I think if you look at cheating or affairs, I bet it's way worse. Now Promiscuity. Than yeah. Because it used to be like, you got married, you didn't have a phone, you didn't have social media. Like you had to go to work. Maybe the receptionist at work was kind of hot. You had a little Jim and Pam thing going on and you end up having an affair. That was, that was it. Maybe you bump into somebody at like the JC Penny. I don't know. Balenciaga. Now it's like, oh, you have access to hundreds of thousands of people on the internet. And if you're a, a successful dude and show that on the internet, your DMs are full of random girls trying to get in there. So like, mine or not, if you're, I'm just saying like if social media makes it so much easier and so much more appealing to not get married because there's so many options out there at any given time. Yeah. But I think if you find like the, the problem is like, also, I'm not saying I'm not like, I will get married. I'm not saying I believe in all this. This is just, I think the reality of it. I think if you find a girl who isn't obsessed with getting attention from yeah. the opposite sex, then I don't think you really need to worry as much about promiscuity of like your partner. No. And it, you just know, like, I know when I get in a relationship, like I ain't, I ain't, I ain't talking to someone else that would make someone else feel uncomfortable. I'm not doing anything. And I feel like, I think you just find someone who has that same kind of moral compass. It's hard to find that, but he, here's a thought that I have about your, when you're like, you know, I understand both sides of like, you know, marriage, why someone would want to get married, why, whether it be a guy or a girl wants to get married. I, I get the, the commitment, the, the vow, like, you know, we're making a commitment to me, mm -hmm. to me. It's almost like a deeper level of, yeah. of, but on the surface level, it's like, can't we just be together? Right. Without getting, without getting the government. Involved. I think if there was a religious marriage only, like there's a way to get married and have a contract with each other that had nothing to do with the government. I would actually make a lot more sense to me. Like I'm agreeing to be with you. That but, makes sense to me, but and, now I have to register with the government and show, you know, like what, yeah, what am no, I doing all this? But I will say, and I know you say you want to get married, like, but you, again, you, mm -hmm. you're just questioning the, mm -hmm. just you're an open sure. thinker. Yeah. You're a uh, controversial guy. Um, the chance is any guy, I think who has the mindset of like, you know, you don't get married. Can't you just be with someone and not need to get married? I understand that mindset, but I think for you to find a partner that has the same mindset of that, that is going to be very hard to find. Like for you to find a girl that also is just like, we don't need to like get, we well, don't need okay. to get married. Like that's going to be tricky. Here's I think marriage from a, a woman. And obviously there's, there's women that fall outside of this. So don't yell at me. Like there are women that have very well off paying jobs and, and will pursue that career. But here we, for the here most we go. Part, here we go. I think the, the reason the marriage thing becomes so important is if I expect you to, to have my child, right? Your minimum I don't know, 10 years, unless I'm paying for a nanny, you have 10 years of raising this kid, taking care of the house every single day with this kid, right? Well, at the end of, let's say 15, 20 years, if there's no marriage and I decide to leave you, like you've been out of the job market for 15 years, you're now 40 something with no job experience. You're kind of screwed. Like, I think that's an insurance policy for women. And no, I think it is. Again, not all of them fall in that, but I mean, think about it. Like if I expect you to be a stay at home and take care of all this, which I think is equally as important as me doing my job, I think the marriage is giving you something there because in 20 years, if I decide I'm going to go hang out with this 18 year old girl I found in the Caribbean, <laughs> now you're on your own. You have no job experience. You have no money. You haven't done it. Like, what are you going to do? She's going to get money from you. Because unfortunately in our society, that whole like taking care of the house and raising kids doesn't pay. I mean, it does if your husband's paying for it, but like otherwise, so like now if you're not in that relationship anymore, like what do you do? Now you're in your forties with no retirement and like you're screwed. So I think the marriage thing is like the agreement of like, if I'm going to do this legally, I'm getting half of everything. We're going to, that's probably where it stemmed from. Like, that's probably where the initial, like, this is why this is going to happen. Okay. If I'm guessing. Someone's going to be very upset. Like, look, women don't need men. I've watched a lot of planet Earth recently. Yeah. Our planet, whatever it's called. Yeah. With, what's the guy who narrates it? Not Morgan Freeman, the other one. David Attenborough. Dude, which, dude he's like in his 90s. He's been doing this like 80 years. Dude, and, and he has the, the best voice for a narration I've ever sick heard in my guy. entire life. He's a cool guy. Sick voice. Yeah. Sick guy. Um, you know, when I'm watching these videos, I'm like looking like he goes through the, the kind of topics of like, like every animal out there, their whole life, yeah. besides trying not to die from wolves and, mm -hmm. you know, giraffes and stuff. Well, actually you're probably, you're, you're running your whole life, snapping necks everywhere. We do that. You're like, I just want leaves. Get away from me. You know, every animal's just looking for their mate. Pretty much. And I'm like, that's, that's what life's about, man. Like, I think life, like at the end of the day, 
like when I'm like home with Taylor and just like having a, and like, I'm like surrounded by like true love like that. Like, I'm like, this is like, what else is that? What's the point? Like, what's the point of life? If, if you don't find like someone that you want to be well, okay. with, because again, like, like what's the dude, once you go through the, your phase of like having fun and whatever, it gets fucking old, man. So animals, which we are, are programmed to procreate, right? You gotta have yeah. a kid. So it's not just finding someone you want to be with. It's finding someone you have a kid with. Right. I don't think animals are trying to find a mate because they want to lay with them all day and yeah, hang but, out. Yeah, but you can tell, like, they, they like- They want to have mates. They want to have kids. At, you look at lions, there's like, like licking the, the mane and stuff. That's yeah. love, man. No, no, I agree. Like, what are you going to do? To sit on your little lion thing and just like roar for their whole life? But no. also that male lion is banging like 17 chicks at the same time. No, so. he bangs one mm, lion. No, there's very few animals in the animal kingdom that are monogamous. Penguins. I think it's one like penguins and like dolphins. I think there's like two. Like it's very rare. You know who the animals are? Some birds. Penguins birds. and max tuning. Good for you. I'm just saying like, like if you think out of the thousands of species out there that like there's a couple and humans are one of those. You know, I, I for the longest time, I had the mindset of like thinking about what's the point of marriage, whatever. Yeah. But you know, and, and again, I, I feel like it's always whether it be like I'm trying to hype up Taylor or if you know she's going to listen to this podcast or something. She's smiling right now. But I, do, I, do, I like, I understand it. Like, like I, I think I'm like, it, not, not just like, an, and when I say like an acceptance, it's not like I'm like accepted this is just how my life is now, but like, I'm like ready to just be with one person. Like I don't. That's wild. I didn't think, unless something terrible happens in the next two weeks, I didn't think, if you would have asked me two years ago, which one of our friends, like close friends would have gotten married first, it would not even, you wouldn't even register it. I think you might have us all beat. I think you might be the first in our close friend group to get married first. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's a very good possibility now. And why do you think that, Joe? Y'all just seem very close. You're also really old. You, you got to do something. <laughs> you don't have time like the rest of us do. I would say, dude, and I think you can, you can back me up. Mm. People think Taylor and I are super cute together. Great together. Y'all are good. Mesh I, like, well together. I like it. I'm cool with it. And you know why? Because I waited enough time to find the right Per person. Yeah. You went through a lot of trash. I did go through a lot of trash, mm -hmm. a lot of trash. Someone's typing right now. Tr tr yeah. <laughs> a lot of trash. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for y'all. Y'all deserve it. It's good. I, I do think y'all are going to get married first. I think y'all are going to beat everyone. You think we're going to beat Christian? I think so. <laughs> I didn't say that. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You going to get married one day? Mm-hmm. Because I want kids, and I think I, I understand that, like... Well, you don't want little bastard children outside of wedlock. I think, I think I've realized, that, like, if I want a kid and I want the kid to be taken care of, I'm going to have to get married. I don't think I can convince somebody to have a kid with me and then just stick around and take care of the kid, but don't get married. Mm, yeah, but you're just going to be, like, at home nerding out. Like, it's not going to be like, you're going to be, like, yeah, at the oil field. I don't have to take care of little Billy. Like, get the hell out of my office, kid. How many kids do you want? To do. I just want a son, so however many it takes to get a boy. And saying that out loud, I'm gonna have like seven girls. I swear to God, dude. I'm getting concerned now because all of our friends have had boys. Like every one of our friends that up so statistically speaking, I'm gonna have a girl. We can't all have boys. Dude, it's every it, time that, someone that, has a boy, there's a better chance of me having a girl. That is not how it works. That's that's how statistics work, yes. It if, is if not one out of ten has a girl and nine of my friends have boys, I'm gonna have Bro, a girl. The semen, the semen in your nuts is not caring about John who's banging other no, people. No, but just statistically, statistically speaking, we can't all have boys. Someone's got to have a girl. You could Petri dish it. This feels wrong. I feel like I would talk shit to my kid about that too. Like if that's how I had him, like I'm. You were made in yeah. a dish. <laughs> I, I made I sure. I love you. I made sure You're that made you had laugh. brown hair and blue eyes or something. But you know, dude, we live in a society where. We don't actually know what gender my kid is. It could be anything it wants. I can't I to say what it is. Ah, <sighs> Joe. Uh huh. One, so if you have a son, you're one and done. I think if I if I have one, son, I mean, unless we really want a second kid to keep that kid company or something. I don't know. I'm dealing with that with Cinna right now. I'm like, do I get a second one so she has someone to play with? Like, mm, no. Yeah, I just really want a son, and I, someone's gonna be mad about that too. But like, I just. No, I see someone, why don't you want a daughter? I, I don't have to worry about a daughter. There's a very different dynamic. Like father, son, I'd come home from like partying all night, drunk at like 17. Like, oh, I just like hooked up with this chick. And my dad'd be like, good Joe, job. You were not hooking up with chicks at 17. <laughs> Anyways, you know, it's like good, good job, son. Like, you know, don't knock anyone up besides that. Go have fun. Your daughter comes home drunk at 17, late at night. It's like, I just hooked up with some dudes. That's a whole, like, I'm locking you in a tower. You're not going out anymore. We're done. 
your phone's gone. Like that is not cool at all. Like there's just too, I don't want to worry about that, dude. Okay. Like if my son's like, I'm going out in the forest all day to go hunting with my friends, like have fun. If my daughter's like, I'm going out in the forest all day. Like, no, you're not. You stink <laughs> upstairs. Like there's no. Well, if any of your fire starting skills pass down to your children, they're all going to freeze to death. Probably. Probably. If you had like one son, would you get the snip snip? Would you get the vasectomy to make sure you don't have any more kids? No. No? Nah. No, I'm fully aware that I'm probably going to be like 65, so having kids. My seventh wife. When do, when do you, seven? No, Joe, you're going to find one lovely I lady. hope so, yeah. What are, when, when do you want to have kids? Um, I, dude, I always, in my head, thought 30. That gives me two years. Like 30 is when like I my have seed has kid. been planted or yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. popped out at no, 30? No, like, like 30. Like I think, I think my dad was probably around 30 when he had me, and I think there's a good, there's a good age gap. Like we can still go snowboarding and do fun stuff. Like too, yeah, stuff. I don't want to be like 75 when my kid's like 15. And then I'm like, oh, I can't go do stuff with you. Are you prepared to like change your whole life to have like to have a kid? I don't think it would change much. I mean, I already kind of. You don't think having a child would change your it life? Would, I'd probably buy less cars. I'd start saving <laughs> for like kid stuff. But besides that, no, I don't think so. Joe's like, let's say that what? does sound like, dude, think about all the times where you're so busy and like, you're like, how am I going to finish this video and stuff? And now like, oh, I have to go to little Johnny's recital tonight. Like that is going to be a. Hmm. Joe, I feel bad for my parents now. Like thinking back, Joe like, would think of it like, let's say, let's say the average is, what is it? Uh, between zero and 18 years old. It's what average of like, I think it used to be like 200 and some thousand dollars to like raise a child. Is it like from zero oh. to 18, assuming you're not doing some, like the yeah. average child is like, that's much a cost. 10% now. 10%. Mm -hmm. I can't do math. Joe, Joe would be like, okay, that's, mm, that's like an entry level GT, uh, GT3 RS. So, okay. I, I could just not get one car and I can raise a child till 18. I think the idea of like paying for someone's, I don't know. I mean, like you're with, if you get married, right? Like you're financially accepting that person, unless they're also like, Hey, I want to pay for this. But for the most part, like I, at least in my old fashioned thing, like if I get married, I'm taking care of all my wife's stuff. If she wants to work and have money. That's great. But like, I don't expect her to pay rent and stuff. Like that's not, how would your finances so, work when you get married? I mean, I'm not going to stop them from making money, but I don't expect them to make money. What if they just want I don't expect my future wife to like have to have a job, but also I'm not going to be like, don't have a job. Like, so how, how would it work if, if she's like, I want not a Balenciaga, but I want a, I want a, I want a bag. Do you, if is I'm it like financially wait for in a spot to do that, like go for it, you know? Hmm. It's our money. If you're going to stay home, I think I'm very like liberal on that stance of like, if you're going to stay home and take care of the kids and like, make sure I'm happy, it's half is yours. You do whatever you want with your half. Cause it is a big like undertaking. Like it's, while it's I'm doing shit, you're doing all this. Okay. I'm cool with that. Joe's like, I'm farming sheep in world of Warcraft. I need someone, whatever it takes dude. to raise a kid. So yeah. you just pick it's our money. So if she just pretty much, I mean, I, within reason, but like, I guess as long as she's not like, Hey, I bought a car today. Like, no, but I think, I think, Sounds really bad. I think there's like some kind of like allowance <laughs> set up here. Not in like I a way of like, a, I don't trust you, but in a way of like, like if you're going to spend more than two grand, call me at least get my okay on this. Like don't go buy a $50,000 watch without fucking talking to me. I think also you would probably know who your partner is to know if like they yeah. randomly yeah, yeah. want to buy luxurious items on the reg yachts on the reg. I'm like, dude, cars, cars is a weird one. Like, do you, do you have Taylor tell you if she takes a big Jeep? Do you, are you okay with Taylor taking the big Jeep without saying anything? She has taken the big Jeep twice, but one time across your mind of like, you should ask one time when she took the big Jeep out, but it's, here's a different, and maybe this applies to like yeah. your fancy cars. My Jeep is a fancy car, mm -hmm. but she, there was one time when she took it. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. She took it. And then like, just let me know later that she took it. But my, it's not that she, she's not going to damage it. Like, yeah. it's not like with a, with a fancy, like a Lambo or something. It's like, I'm worried about. A, you parking it in a car, uh, a, you know, like a, a cart hits it because you parked it too close or like, you know, hitting a curb or something like that. I'm not with the Jeep. You can run over these Lamborghinis. Yeah, yeah. My thing is. There's a chance with that Jeep that it's not going to handle yeah. like a car and you're going to it's going to malfunction and crash and you're not going to know how to handle it or you're going to turn it too far to the left and the hydro assist is, is the, the Ram's going to be, you know, maxing out and you're going to bust the, <laughs> I think, I think I draw the line of the cars. I think everything's half and half, but like the cars are mine. Joe's like, like you can drive the Ferrari, but don't just take the Ferrari. Joe's like, everything's half and half. It's just, if you want to buy something, just like ask me <laughs> and then I'll make the decision if you can or not. Okay, but and I'll then, also ask, I won't spend any money until, you know, no, it's, it's a dual. So, if, it was, so if, if, if it's your money, you would, if you wanted to buy a new I think watch, if, if it's going to financially affect our ability to do other things, yes. Like I think if my purchase is going to 
not let us go on vacation next month or not let us do whatever, then yes, I should probably ask. So what if your wife wants to buy a Rolex and she's like, it's, I've seen our, your bank, our bank account. It's not going to affect our way of living. I bought a $30,000 Rolex. I mean, we're going on a slippery slope here. I don't know. <laughs> I the fifth. Joe, Joe's like, yeah, no, everything's shared, but there's rules that are, that I control specifically. <laughs> I'm excited for the future. How do you, you hold up? How do you feel about prenups? I'm excited for the future <laughs> okay, for, right. for everything that yeah. we're doing, okay. Joe. Mm -hmm. You know, dude, I, there's a couple more things I want to get into. We're at an hour and 20. I got no problem. Dude. We can keep going. No, but I, I think people, like, I think this is so good that people are going to want you back. Oh, maybe. People are going to be like, I want more. I want, I want to tell you the topic. I want to tell you another topic. Well, let's just go. Let's go hour 30. What are we at right now? Well, I have two big ones, but right, I don't. Let's go. Would you rather? Would you rather talk about, would you rather talk about, see, normally my, my, my stuff like flows into the next one. Yeah. Would you rather talk about college or space? Mm. I feel like I know more about space. I feel like I know more about space, but I have stronger opinions about college. What's your thoughts about college, dude? We'll save space for the next, right. the next one. I don't, I mean, I didn't go to college, right? I was supposed to go to college. I was, I was told to, you that's know, that's why you have a blank hoodie, no lit name yeah, brand logo. I was, I was expected to go to college. Um, I hated school. I, I really hated high school. The last thing I wanted to do was, so I just, I, I started working as like a used car. I, I got a job. I was like, I'm not going to college. Um, I think if you don't have any connections, you have no way to make it in life. Like you, you almost, you're forced to go to college at this point. Do you think if you don't right. know what you want to do, you should go to college or that's no, a waste of because, money? I mean, like at this point you can learn. So this is where I kind of draw the line. Like anything, anything you have to go to school for, go to school for. You want to be a doctor. You want to be an engineer. You have to have a degree for these things. No one's hiring you as a doctor without, you know, like you've got to, you're going to be a lawyer, go to college. No, I watched Suits and he didn't go to college and okay. he became a great lawyer. Yes. Anyways, <laughs> you have to go to school on, on those fronts. Right. But like, if you're like, oh, I'm going to get a business degree, you can, there's also, I, had a business I know. Degree. So there's also, you can get a business degree from home cheaply. You don't have to put yourself $150,000 in debt to go get a business degree. Because realistically, when you get out of college, you're not getting a job. And if you are getting a job, it's like 50,000 a year. Now you're 150 in debt. And, now you, and the one thing you can't get away from is college loans. College loans are like the most predatory lending. Like there's no way out of them. You can declare bankruptcy. You're still paying your college loans. I don't think you need to go to college at this point. But I think at the same time, I think a lot of kids will look at that and be like, okay, well, like, what do I do? Like if you live a very like, lower class, middle class life. You don't have anyone that's going to hire. You don't have any friends, dads that can give you a job or whatever. Like what, you know, you're not going to work at Chick-fil-A forever. So what are you going to do? College is probably a good way to get your foot in the door somewhere. I, you know, like learning coding and stuff, but I'm also, I was in a very different position. I was in a position where like I have family to lean on. I have friends that have successful parents that would hire me for stuff. I had a friend group that would give me a chance to do stuff. So like, I don't know. My views have changed. Five years ago, I'd say no one should go to college. You can learn everything on the internet. Five years ago, you'd say that? Yeah, 100%. Now, as I'm getting a little bit older, I think I, I still stand by that, but I do also see the side of like, there are a lot of people that don't have, like there's, there's nothing they can do. I mean, they, if they don't go to college, like how do you get your foot in the door? Go yeah. make a LinkedIn. No one's reaching out to you. I mean, if you really don't have any connections anywhere, like you. I pretty much agree with you. I, th yeah. I think that nowadays in today's time, yeah, if you have a very specific job skill set you want to get that requires a degree, go for it. But I think you can just learn everything online. Again, I, I don't, I, whenever people ask me if I went to college, I'm like, yep, graduated, got my bachelor's degree in business administration. They're like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. You know, you're in, you're in business management. I'm like, yeah, I don't remember literally anything. They're yeah. like, no, you probably do, but you just don't like apply it directly. Yeah. I was like, no, like I learned it to pass the test. And I, I, I couldn't tell you anything. I remember terms like Six Sigma, green belt. I don't know what that is. Am I implying these things in my life? Yes, but they're not because things that I learned. I think college does make a lot of people grow up. Yes. And it probably helps a lot with like time management and stuff because you're forced into that like corporate world of like waking up at this time. You have to get this done by tomorrow. You don't, you know, I think it's probably good on that front. But Social is it, skills and is stuff. Is $100,000 a year good? Yeah, but like how do you, you can't measure that. And you know. But it, I have, to, to be fair, I have friends that got their business degrees from home, probably spent $30,000 on the whole degree and now they're good and now they're making money. And then I have, the same amount of friends that went to an out of state school, party their asses off, spent all their college loans on a crazy apartment shit. And now they're $200,000 in debt. And they're still, so like there is a proper way. If you're going to do college, I think you 
do it for the education, not for the partying. Yeah, but uh, here's, okay. But do you know people who did not go to college that are socially awkward people? Maybe a little reserved? Mm, me. Did, no. <laughs> did, I think that the social skills you get, you know, you know, you hear about so many people who like are signing up for like, you know, dating coaching. Cause they're like, I don't know how to talk to a girl. I think if you go to call, bro, the amount of like interactions that I had with just the opposite sex and like you know, getting out there and like learning how to like talk to women and like flirt and like, I feel like we interact in high school though. You don't do that in high school. Yeah, Everyone's high school like, was... what beanie baby do you have and stuff in college? You're going to parties. You're going out. Like you're having these interactions. You're having little mingles. Like, Dude, you're, you're going to class, like you're meeting people, you're talking, you have to, you have to talk to people on a regular basis. If you just like, I'm, I'm just saying like, a, I think college for me was what changed who I, who I am because I learned so much like of my social skills in college. But again, was that worth tens of thousands of dollars in, you know, student loans that I had? I will say that I, I know more averagely successful people that have went to college. Yes. But out of the top 10% of people that I know that are the highest, most successful people, none of them went to school. I don't think any of the most successful people I know went to school, but the average success level of my friend group is higher if you went to school. I think the people who are in the top 5, 10, 1% of, yeah. of like financial success that you've experienced, they, I think they would have been like that whether they went to school Probably. or didn't go to school. That's I just, just like, like, that's their, how their, how their code was written, Joe. But I, I think if you're in anything, content creation, media, coding, engine, not engineering, but like software engineering, you don't need to do it. Everything's on YouTube. If well, you just know how to use Google, honestly, knowing how to use Google is the most important thing right now. Well, now you can have success by just like, you know. That's a whole different, dude. There's, mm, you made me play Fortnite the other day. And you had fun and you, and we're going to we play We also later learned today. that Max is the worst Warzone player of all time. And then we get into so Fortnite. So bad. I lead us to victory with I led us to victory. Kills. Thank you very much. Boom. But I think getting into the whole like TikTok thing and all that, like Fortnite to me is like, it's like, it's like kid propaganda. Everything in that game is engineered to just be like appealing to my childlike senses. I don't know. I'm like, why is there? You think one pumping kids it's in like the face? Hunt. What? <laughs> Do you think one pumping kids in the face is a problem? This is definitely getting monetized now. Uh, yeah, that is a problem. I'm saying that doesn't like appeal to your kid senses. No, but I just when I snipe you across whole, the map, 200 meters, just, we play Warzone, and I'm like, all right, guy on the left, coming this way, pushing this way. Like I'm like forming a little plan in Warzone or in in Fortnite. It's like oh, I'm, like I, slap that jellyfish to get some <laughs> shield. Drink a fish potion over here. There's a dude twerking on top of this house. I'm gonna shoot him with the punch cannon. Like let's put him in a fish bag. I'm like I don't. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> I just want to like kill somebody and can't do that. I and mean, people are dancing on me. A little <laughs> helicopter comes down. Like, I don't, what is happening? Like, it's so confusing. Propaganda. You said social media. TikTok's about to get taken down. TikTok is. I think a lot of people that were strictly TikTokers are thinking that's kind of stupid right now. Cause like, what are you going to do when your TikTok gets, this is like Vine 2.0. When Vine went down and all of the Vine people came to Instagram and kind of ruined Instagram. Why did Vine get shut down? I think it just wasn't profitable. I think they couldn't turn a profit and they didn't know what to do with it. I think it was a good idea just before. So it's like the opposite of TikTok. TikTok's making money. Yeah. But so I think the same thing, I think it's like Instagram's going to get so much worse because every time one of these things gets banned or turned off, everyone goes to Instagram and Instagram just completely, I hate Instagram now, dude. I, maybe I'm old school. Like I enjoyed Instagram when it was just like cool photos of stuff. Like I follow like Nat Geo and like NASA and stuff like that. Now it's just like constant mind numbing, just nothing. Just shaking booties. Pretty much like, it's just so, you know, it's like, what, what do you also the filters or on that topic? Like people hate the way they look. Like if you look at the top used filters on Instagram, all of them are these crazy. There's just some, like the amount of makeup and shit. And I'm like, you don't look like this. It's there's just, some that I'll, I'll use. I'll like, you know, see, I mean, it's whoever's using it uses it. Yeah. And I'm like, what filter is that? And I click it and I put it on me and I'm like, holy yeah, shit. I'm like, this is I'm me. good looking. Yeah. Like I'm, What's your biggest, this, this leads into that. What's your biggest irrational fear? Becoming irrelevant on the internet. That's your biggest irrational fear. That's not even irrational. That could happen. It is happening. Yes. It's not irrational. Like what's your biggest like fear that like, this is a stupid thing to be fear, like scared of probably not going to happen, but like becoming irrelevant on the internet that, that is a real fear becoming washed up. Okay. Mine. Because I, because I know here's the thing, bro. You know, I was, I was, I, I, I still, a can of worms. I know, I know we're not getting this now because uh -huh. I'm going to talk about YouTube yeah, and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Like, I know that, like, 
I'm the best. I know that my content is good. It is and good. I know that my I'm funny. And I know the that I'm caring changing, about the videos I'm making. I know that I'm like a cool guy. Fun guy. Why don't I am like a mushroom. I'm a fun guy. I'm like, why don't people see this? Okay, so my my biggest rational fear is being conned into having an ugly child with an ugly girl that's not ugly anymore because of social media slash surgery slash makeup. Social media is creating this I weird- never thought about if someone gets a lot of surgery and you meet them at their now and then you have a child, but you shouldn't care if the child- I'm just saying, that is my biggest- So like, if I meet you on the internet, you- Back in my day, back when we were, you know, it was like you met someone on the internet. Hey, send me, you know, a friend gave you someone's number. Send me a photo. Send me a nude. Send me a photo. <laughs> and then, you know, now I know who I'm talking to. Well, then Instagram filters and Facetune and stuff like that kind of became relevant. Now I can't really go off the photo anymore because like, you know. You're like, I need to see a video of you. Now Instagram filters came out and Facetune for video and stuff. Now I can't even trust the fucking video anymore. And there have been times, I probably for you as well. There's been times where like I have met someone on the internet, gone on a date and walked in and I'm like, this is not the same That's fucking how I felt human when I that I was you. talking to. This is not the same human that I was talking to on the internet. And then you mix that with like plastic surgery and stuff like as a guy. I can't put a filter on my face with makeup and you know, like I can't all the filters that are heavily used guys can't use because they have like an eyeshadow and stuff, you know, I'm stuck like this. Yeah. Girls can between makeup, like surgery and all that. So I'm like, you could be completely catfished into a girl looks nothing the way she does now. I never thought have a kid and then be like, why the fuck does a kid look? (laughs) Bro, that's I'm going to love my child regardless, but I, I have never thought about. It's like, it looked like a totally different person that like, do you find a natural, like in my mind, I'm like a natural six out of 10 is way better looking to me than like a fucking fake nine out of 10. Yeah. Like I would rather you be like good looking naturally than really hot, completely fake with eight pounds of makeup on your face. And I'm like, that's where I'm. And also that shit's gotten so out of hand too. We're like Facetune. I remember when Facetune first came out, there was like, if someone like, if you smoothed your skin a little too much, all the comments were calling you out about yeah. it. Like if you change anything, people yeah, were like, like really teeth into are it. white as fuck. Now, like these girls I follow on Instagram, it's like, they look like fucking clowns. It's like, yeah. they're not even trying anymore. Like the door frame behind them is warped from how much they're bringing their waist in and their face you know, is like completely smooth. I'm like, you're so, I, and all the comments are like, yes, girl, slay girl. Oh my God, girl, like beautiful. And I'm like, I don't want to hype, keep hyping Taylor up. So there was, I think it was Abraham Lincoln that once said, sweatpants, hair tie, chilling with no makeup on. That's when you're the prettiest. I hope you don't take it wrong. To be honest, and the tailor doesn't wear a ton of makeup. I'm like, you know, when she goes, you know, glam mode, that's kind of a, a different, but like she looks fantastic with makeup. But like, I think like when you, when you find someone of the opposite, opposite sex, when you find your partner in life, God, dude, we're at that point in life. When you find your partner in life. Like I think when Taylor's just like chilling at home with no makeup, I'm like, I'm st- Taylor's a naturally good looking person. Yeah, I'm like so attracted to her. And and it's not like, it's hard to word it of of whatever, but like, I think when you find someone who just has like this natural beauty that you're attracted to them, like in their, and and it's not like, oh, you need to be like this level of attractiveness. I'm talking about like, it's like, I'm attracted to like everything about you and just you in your natural form. Like you don't need to feel like you need to put on this alternate face for me to find you attractive, for the world to find attractive. I'm like, I think you're, I'm sound so lame, but like, I th- I'm like, I think you're beautiful, like as is. And like, that's what I think, but it, that's what's we're saying. in a wild time. We're that's like, what's hard. I mean, when, when you meet someone on a dating app, it, it, I don't think it's shallow. I think it's like all like your first attraction to someone is their physical appearance. Like yeah. that, that's why you go on a date with someone like is you, you meet them or you find them attractive. Then you start learning about their conversation. Then you start being attracted to how they communicate with you. Then you go on a date, right? But like the attraction, like you have to have that it's just, natural yeah i mean people talk about again this but it, you'd feel lied circle. to if you went out on a date yeah. and it's like you not only well, from the filters to the that but then it's like makeup, people alter surgery, themselves so much then, like, well then you have girls that like you take them home what do you do with them well then it's like i'm you're take your makeup off in the morning they won't so now it's like i have no clue my pillow's got a face print in it from all the makeup but like i have no clue what you look i think like we still. should get, i think we should crazy get. But bringing that into a whole different thing and we don't have to go into it, but like, so metaverse, right? The whole idea behind like the metaverse is like with voice changers and stuff, a really good looking girl in the metaverse could be a 400 pound dude on his bed. You have no clue. Well, I would argue that like some of the TikTok and Instagram models are already kind of doing that. Like the girls that you idolize being in this group and like at Alpha Land, I'm not going to call anyone out. 
But like I have the luxury of like seeing a lot of the Instagram models in person. They don't look anything like their photo. There's girls on Instagram like you are really good looking and I see them here and I don't even take a double take. I'm like, what the hell was that? Look, I understand. It's a fake person. I don't, I don't think everyone's using makeup to try to like look like, so I, I think some people maybe have confidence. Makeup's in, not as bad as filters. I'm cool with makeup. Yeah. Filters are a different thing. That's like, true. Inst- yeah. Like your personality on Instagram is a, you're a VR person. Like if you, you, if you use filters and stuff on Instagram, you do not exist in the real world. That is a different personality in my mind. Cause if I see you in person, like I don't even recognize you. So this is a completely, this is a facade. I would be happy if Instagram and all these things got rid of any sort of like altering 100%. face, anything, but they won't. Cause that's what sells. Cause people hate the way they look. Do you hate the way you look? Yeah. Sometimes. I think everyone is beautiful if they decide to put makeup on, not makeup, but I do just maybe prefer that people be, I think, I think the, the, the face altering stuff because you want the, the machine on the, the app to change the way you look. Mm-hmm. I think you just kind of accept how you look, you know, mm-hmm. I think everyone, everyone's beautiful their own. So that goes full circle back to TikTok and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all fake. TikTok's going to get banned. We're basically living in the metaverse right now, dude. All of it's fake. Everything you see on the internet's fake. It is, dude, now everyone likes, uh, we're getting too deep in this, dude. We're, right. we're going to wrap this up. Okay, man, dude, I, we, there's some stuff we got to get people down below. Tell me if you thought this episode was just as good as the randomness of the first one, or you're like, wow, this was so random all over the place. You tried too hard to be a random sit down topic thing. I hate this podcast unsubscribing and I hate Joe and I'm out. What's next for you, Joe? Just building apps and, you know, I, I'm not going to say I'm going to make more content, <clears throat> but 2023, I think I want to. I think our last podcast was four or five months ago. I've released one video since. I have not dropped a video in two months. So in that last podcast, you said that you were going to have a video by the time this pod, that podcast went mm-hmm. up and it was like two weeks later. Yeah, I think 20, 2023, I want to start doing like a episode based thing. Why don't you just make a commitment, dude? Because you're going to have to make like a commitment commitments, in dude. life I one know. day. Marriage. Why don't, why don't you just say two or one video a month guarantee put up like on, on this, the second Sunday of every month, I'm gonna have a video out. I think my, my idea now is to take my channel and kind of mix the tech side of it in, not just cars, but do cars and tech. Didn't you start a tech channel and then you uploaded one video? It did really well. It actually and then you never uploaded well. a second video. I know. I think I don't have enough time to manage to. So I'm like, I'm just gonna mix them together and we'll just do a weekly episode. And that episode could just be a bullshit vlog. I could go buy some sour strips at target. Or it could be like a cinematic, you know, whatever. Or it could be like a tutorial on your computer and you're not going to know what the hell you're going to get until I drop the vlog. But But no matter what, you're going to be entertained. Pump them out, yeah. Because my current content's like, dude, it takes me, you know, I got two cameras and a GoPro and, you know, four different things. I got to drive the car out to the forest to do like those shots. I got to get three people to do rollers. Like it's a whole production to put out like one of these like review videos. We get it. Your videos are top tier. They used to be. Well, I'm excited for the future for you, dude. Thanks. I hope this episode does not get demonetized. We didn't say anything about Dude, Rob Bailey punched his wife in the head and we didn't get demonetized. And then his wife punched me in the head. Didn't get demonetized. Bondage bears. <laughs> that is going to wrap up episode 32, starting of season two of the Don't Be Sour show. Um, all of Joe's links to his channels that have dust on them at the moment are going to be down in the description. His Instagram is started losing followers. He said it's back at 50 right now. We're holding, we're maintaining at 50. Well, you're under 50. The last one, we're going to get you back up. Everyone go follow Joe. Maybe we have, dude, maybe, maybe like once a month, you come back, maybe every episode, dude, let's just make this one. I like, why it. don't you and me interview someone else? That'd be great. Damn. Who do, uh, who do we want to interview? Hmm. I don't know. I feel like we should get like Sholly. You want to grill Sholly? Like Sholly be a fun person. Sholly, why don't we talk about NFTs is. anymore, dude? This is all of us can kind of just, you know, I know we're super uncultured, by the way. Well, I'm, I'm cultured. The final game of the World Cup is on right now. Who's playing? <laughs> Case in point, dude. I don't think you need to be co- to watch sports. Soccer just, is the most viewed thing in the world. Like, this is the biggest event of the last four years. And Is that why my YouTube I video is not doing well today? Yeah, today would be a terrible day to launch. Huh? Did you launch one at 9 o'clock? Yeah. That's when the game started. Fuck, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... uh, Argentina and France. It's probably over by now. I did. Did America win? We no. We suck. What? Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. Okay. Well, that is going to wrap up the the episode. Make sure if you're on YouTube, comment, 
like the video, subscribe if you're not subscribed. If you're listening on any sort of podcast streaming service, give us a five-star review. Joe, thank you so much for coming on the show. That will wrap it up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Eat more sour strips. And ever forward. Goodbye. Dude, we talked about a lot of topics in there. That was a good one. You think? That was better than the first one. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it had, fl- you know why it's better than the first one? Because the first one was just talking about like you and what like was, your background. The space, the space topic was like, do you think the life's out there? Cut it right there. Space topic. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about. That, I would, we should talk about that next time because I have a lot of shit on Yeah, and I, I want to understand how time works on different planets. Like I in inter- at Interstellar, it's like, you've been gone for three minutes. It's been 10 years.